Welcome to our lecture online. What we want to do here is take another look at a particular solution to this differential equation. It's a second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. And let's assume that the solution to this one is going to have complex roots. Now we've seen this one before, but we're going to rewrite the final general solution to that. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and solve this equation. The characteristic equation of this looks as follows. Characteristic equation is going to be a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero. Looks just like a quadratic formula here or a quadratic equation. We solve that using the quadratic formula. r will be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And let's assume that in this particular case, what's underneath the radical is going to be less than zero. So let's say that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. If that is the case, the roots will be imaginary, and then you can write the roots as follows. Roots 1 and 2 is going to be equal to, and that would be a plus or minus bi. So that would be the general form of the two roots which are now imaginary. So this will give us a solution to the general equation as follows. So y is a function of time is equal to, and that would be c1 e to the a plus bi times t plus c2 e to the a minus bi times t. Of course, we can then rewrite that a little bit more. We can separate those two, and this would become y as a function of time is equal to c1 e to the at times e to the bit. And here we get plus c2 e to the at times e to the bit. And there would be a minus in front of that one. Then we can factor out an e to the at. So we get y as a function of t is equal to e to the at times the quantity c1 e to the bit and that would be plus c2 e to the negative bit. Now once we have it in this format we can actually expand these because these are imaginary exponents so this can then be expanded as follows. We now have y as a function of time is equal to e to the at times, and here we have c1 cosine of bt plus i times the sine of bt, and then plus c2 times cosine of bt minus the i of sine of bt, like this. And that would be the general solution to this differential equation when we have complex roots. However, we don't like to have these i's in this solution right here. So we can get rid of the i's by playing a little trick with the coefficients, with the constants, I should say. And we can do the following. We can come up with another constant, c3, which is simply equal to the sum of c1 plus c2. And we can come up with another constant, c4, which is going to be equal to i c1 minus i c2. If we do that, if we make that substitution, then we can write c3 times the cosine of b as the sum of c1 times the cosine of b plus c2 times the cosine of b. And we can do the same for the sine. We can say that c4 times the sine of b, and of course, I can add the t to that, make it a little bit more complete. There we go, and then here the same thing. This can be written as c1 sine of, and of course I should maybe also put the i in front, c1 times i times the sine of bt minus c2i times the sine of bt. In other words, we're wrapping the imaginary number i into our constant c4. Then we can rewrite our solution as follows. We can now write that y as a function of t is equal to e to the at times c3 
cosine of Bt plus C4. Yes, it would be a plus C4 times the sine of Bt. And notice there's no longer a mention of an imaginary number. Now true, C4 could have that imaginary number in there. However, once we get the initial conditions for y and y prime and we plug those in and solve for C3 and C4, usually we only care about the real part, not the imaginary part, and this then becomes the proper solution to this homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, assuming that the characteristic equation will give us that imaginary root, the case three of the three possible solutions to this equation. And that's how it's done.